your cash point card. The basic access control mechanism works on based on information like the number of the passport, the name of the passport holder, the date of birth, and then of other data which are simply readable by anybody who looks on the passport. If you have that information and, and put the respective software into the reader, and the reader can overcome the basic access control of the passport. The doubts about this technology are not just... So, um, yes, good point. So what they've done is they've standardized the way you figure out the key. <laughs> it's different for each passport, but the way you find it is the same. Okay? So basically, you, you read the, the MRZ, the machine-readable zone at the bottom of the passport. You take the first field, which is the passport number. You take the, um, the date of birth, and you take the expiry date of the passport, and you add those things together, and that's your key. <laughs> That's very secure. So um, I'm actually going to uh, page are very closely tied to each other. Federal authorities say that data chip makes the new passports much more difficult to counterfeit than paper ones. But some technology analysts say e-passports come with serious security flaws. There's a number of, of things that we, can, we should worry about. Um, Patrick Riley is a grad student at UC Berkeley School of Information. He recently completed a Fulbright Fellowship study on e-passport use in Germany and says the data encrypted U.S. version can be hacked and counterfeited. If someone is actually scanning the passports with an RFID chip, someone else... So it's now read, um, it's logged in, it's now reading the files. As you can see, it's read the... Um, the MRZ data, so that's the actual name and the date of birth and stuff stored in the passport. It's now reading um, another file. Each item is stored as a discrete file. So there is what is actually stored. So as you can see, I was much better looking when I had this passport, um, <laughs> even with the lights and all that. Uh, this is actually my son's passport. And um, this is what's stored so none of this is taken off my hard disk. This is actually stored in the passport. So his image, name, date of birth, expiry date, all of that stuff is directly stored on the passport. Okay. So if you now wanted um, to make One of the things they said was, okay, so you've copied a passport which you had in your hand and you could have photocopied. What's the big deal? Um, and so I was challenged by a UK newspaper uh, called the Daily Mail to say, well, would it be possible to read the passport without actually having it open in your hands and being able to read the MRZ? And I believed it was, and so they challenged me to actually do that. So the, the way it worked was I went to their office and they had someone apply for a new passport, and it arrived, and in the sealed envelope, they gave me the sealed envelope and said, right, now read that passport. Um, and I read it in about four hours, basically. So I brute forced. Yes. Original and undetectable. So how did they do it? The chip inside the e-passport is radio frequency identification, or RFID, which is poised to replace the barcode in supermarkets. The good thing about RFID chips is they emit radio signals that can be read at a short distance by an electronic reader. Incidentally. This is also the bad thing about them because, as Lucas demonstrates, he can easily download the data from his passport. I fear a uh, German passport this is actually my own passport. I've issued at my uh, German passport authority. I'm now putting this passport on top of this RFID reader I got for 200 uh, euros on eBay. Lucas is less forthcoming about where he got what's called the Golden Reader tool. It's the very software used by border police and allows him to read the chip on his e-passport, including the photo. Now, for the clever bit, thanks to a software he himself has developed called RF Dump, he downloads the passport's data onto his computer and then onto a blank chip. This is a standard off-the-shelf component. You can just buy at a component store. I'm putting this card on the reader. And in less than five minutes, you have a cloned e-passport. And now let's have a look how the cloned passport rate compared to my original one. And if I'm starting to read it, it behaves exactly the same. 
like my original passport. If you are okay. so the question is so you can copy one, but can you forge one? So can you change the content of an existing um, passport or create a, a completely arbitrary one? So when I was reading the files, um, as I said, each one is stored in a discrete file. So each object, each of the 48 items is, is in a file stored on the passport. So the image is in a file called um, EFDG2 and I extract that to a JPEG. There is a, device, uh, there is a file called the security object, EFSOD. And EFSOD contains digital signatures for each of the other files and the signature for itself. Um, if we look at that with a hex editor, you can see that within there, there's the signing authority's um, public key. Okay, so you can check the signature against the public key of the authority that issued it, which you read from the passport. Anyone spot the deliberate mistake? <laughs> okay, so basically you're checking the validity of an object stored on this object against an object stored on this object. So I give you the new key that matches the signed stuff that I've given you, and it's game over. And take a look at possible methods for improving this design. The current RFID passport proposal utilizes a small shield that is designed to mitigate the threat of skimming from long distances when the booklet is closed or nearly closed. When open, a passport can be freely read by the appropriate authorities. This may prevent reading when the passport is completely closed. However, when slightly open, the passport can still be read. This is a serious problem. A passport can easily become part um, There's no shielding in the UK passport. The only passport I've seen so far that has any shielding in the, the cover is the US passport. So if that had been a US passport in a sealed envelope, I wouldn't have been able to read it. Um, the UK passport, when it's closed, you can read it. Um, but incidentally, the US passport, if you just allow it to flop open like this, the shielding actually acts as a kind of amplifier and makes it even easier to read. So. <laughs> um, but the reason that was possible, so if I try and read this... ...we need the passport in our hand. Um, I've also found I can profile passports to a certain degree. So I can tell when I see a passport even without logging into it or trying to read the details. So uh, just random person walking past, um, I can figure out to some degree which country you come from for certain countries. So I reckon at the moment I can determine a US passport, I can determine an Italian passport, and I can determine an Australian passport. Um, Data encrypted US version can be hacked and counterfeited. If someone is actually scanning the passports with an RFID chip, someone else, a middle party, actually could intercept the signal. This is eavesdropping. Riley says that means terrorists with portable RFID scanners could easily target Americans traveling abroad. There is the, the technology out there then to also identify the information on a passport just as someone's walking around. Infineon's Jorg Bozier says the data... However, even knowing that somebody is carrying a passport or where he or she may be carrying it is a serious security vulnerability. Even more important, it may be possible to fingerprint the characteristics inherent in each country's RFID passport, identifying the nationality of the holder. This may allow terrorists to craft explosives that only detonate when a citizen of a certain country is nearby. We designed this trash can that will detonate a small charge when it detects an RFID passport nearby as a proof of concept as to what a terrorist could do. This dummy will have a partially open passport at its waist, simulating what would happen if you had a passport in your pocket. Now we're going to test the current proposed passport system. When the dummy passes by the trash can, the charge will detonate, indicating that the tag was read, even though the passport is only open half of an inch. <laughs>